hey there guys and welcome back. On this week's show, some wooden train tracks. Well, as I said in the intro on today's show, we're making some wooden train tracks. And what I'm referring to is the toy type of train tracks, the classic style like this. These have been around for a kajillion years and it always seems that no matter how many curved pieces you have or Y splits or whatever junction pieces, bridges, you never have enough straight pieces. Sometimes you just want to go right down the hallway and you can't do it with just your regular sets. So today I'm going to teach you how to make the straight pieces in order to add on to your existing set and extend it so that, well, you know what? You can extend your children's imagination as well. Now this build is a fairly simple one that takes some simple tools and it all starts out with some layout because what we're going to do is we're going to make a template. Well, as I normally do, the material I'm going to use for our template is quarter inch MDF or quarter inch hardboard, whichever you prefer. I've adhered some white paper on this just for clarity because as we all know, sometimes there's problems seeing the lines that are drawn on certain um, stock. So the first thing that we want to do here, we have this cut to its final dimension, which is one and nine sixteenths of an inch wide. That is the size of our tracks. And the first thing that we want to do is we want to run a center line end to end on our template for reference. Now from one end, we're going to place a square line across our stock at one inch in from our end. And then from our line at one inch, we're going to come across five and 15 sixteenths and draw another square line across our stock. Just like that. Now this is going to be the length of our longer piece. This is where our male end will be and our female end will be cut into this end. So our piece is essentially six inches long. It's actually a sixteenth shy. So now what I want to do is on the opposite side here, I'm going to place another mark at one inch in. And then at two and three eighths of an inch from the line that we just drew, we're going to draw another square line across our stock and this will represent the length of our shorter track pieces, the straight pieces. Sometimes you need the little small ones to fill in the gaps. We now need to mark for our female sections here. So what we're gonna do is on each side, coming in from the edge, we're going to mark a line at five eighths of an inch. And we only need to make it maybe three quarters of an inch long, just like that. And we're going to do it on both sides and that will provide us with the beginning of our key. Just like that. And we're going to do the same on this side for the female section of this side. just like that. Now from our cross line here, measuring back towards the middle of our piece, we're going to place a line here at 930 seconds of an inch.
and we'll just double check that measurement and make sure that it's right that is and we will do the same thing on this female part here and just like we did before we're just going to check that measurement to make sure that it's right and it is now those lines that we just drew that is going to mark the edge of the hole for our key and for that what we're going to do is we're going to take a circle template we're going to get a half inch template here we're going to line it up with that edge line and with our center line which we put on there for reference and we're going to draw a half inch hole that now becomes our female receptacle for our tracks. And we will do the exact same thing on this side, lining it up there with the center line and with the mark at 930 seconds of an inch in, and we will draw a half inch hole. It's now time to mark our male sections of our pieces of track. Well, the first mark that we're going to need is we need to mark it so that we're left with a quarter inch um, piece at the end for our ball to go on. So we're going to mark it here. It just goes like this. Oops, my clamp came undone. I guess I didn't, oh, I didn't tighten it. <laughs> okay, let's try this again. There we go. Okay, so we'll mark this one right here. There is for our quarter inch ball, or sorry, our quarter inch stem that our ball will go on to, and we can verify that measurement. And yes, it's a quarter of an inch. And we're gonna do the same thing on the opposite end for our longer piece of track. And we will double check that as well. You have to remember these are templates, guys. So you want to make sure that they're accurate and they are both just fine. Now it's time to add our ball on the end. So just like we did with the female sections, we want to mark from the edge of our piece out we want to mark at 930 seconds of an inch. And that will be the edge of our ball, just like we did with the female piece. So we'll mark it on this side as well. There we go. And then from there, we will get our circle template once again and using our center line and the edge of this line here, we're going to put a 7 16th diameter circle right at that point. So line it up with your center mark and with your edge mark. And there we go. There's your 7 16th male end. And we'll do the same thing on this side here. Trying my best not to get in the way of the camera. That looks pretty lined up. And there we go, 7 sixteenths of an inch. So I'm gonna go through now um, all the measurements and verify, and then I'm gonna take it over and cut it at the scroll saw. And what we're gonna want to cut out is this section right here along with our ball on both pieces, that will be the female section, and everything around here for the male section. So take your time and cut it carefully, remembering this is a template.
And when it's all said and done, you should have two templates that look just like this. Now, you may have to do a little bit of adjustment. My measurements here were so tight on the one end that it didn't fit well with the store-bought stock. So I actually had to trim just a tiny bit off of my template so that the pieces would fit. It wasn't much, it was about a 32nd of an inch, but all in all, when I was done, it fit perfectly. So now it's time to prepare our stock to cut our train track pieces. And for that, we're going to be using half inch thick maple. Well, I have our stock here half inch thick and I have cut it to be one and nine sixteenths of an inch wide. Same width as our track and our templates. So the first thing that we want to do to prepare our stock is we want to take a 1 16th round over and on each one of these sharp corners, we're going to put a slight little chamfer on it with that round over, nothing serious, but just enough to take off that sharp little edge there. Remember, children are playing with this and we want to take away the sharp edges so they don't cut themselves with the maple. Well, it's now time to mark and prepare to cut the grooves that will go in our pieces of track. And this is kind of where the measurements get a little funky. But, you know, if you just take your time, everything is fine. As well, um, once you get the setup done once, that's it, because you're running all the pieces. You only have to do it the once. So in from the edge here at 11 64ths of an inch, we're going to put a line. The next mark that you want to make will be at 1330 seconds. And that is it right there. Now, what these two marks represent is our track. This is where the grooves are going to get cut, and these are the outside limits of those grooves. So what we're going to do is we're going to cut this on the table saw. We're going to use our lines that we've just drawn as a reference to set up our fence, and we're going to cut them uh, with a ripping blade at 9 64ths of an inch deep. I've set my blade to the proper height just by placing a mark at the end of our stock and then raising the blade until it touches that mark. And from there, what I've done is I've transferred our track marks to the end and I've set the fence so that our blade will strike exactly in the middle. So all I'm going to do is I'm going to make one pass, I'm going to rotate the stock 180 degrees and make a second pass. Well, the next step that I want to do is I want to set up my fence again. I'm going to shift it over just a little bit. And we're going to take another pass. All in all, it's going to take three, three passes per rail that we're cutting. So there you go. I've got that set now and I'll just run everything through again. And then lastly, we are going to set up our fence so that it kisses that line on the opposite side of our groove. And when we get the fence set up for that, we're going to repeat the process. One pass, 180 degree turn, and one pass. Now, 
Now with all this track cut, all we're going to do is lay our template on top of the track and then trace it out and then one by one, take it over to the scroll saw and cut them out. Now when tracing them, I actually prefer to mark the end and then give myself a fresh square line across our piece. Uh, you never know with cutting the template, sometimes thing go, things go a little funky. So we'll just put new square lines on here to give us something to cut. As well, you may be wondering why I didn't just overlap them, put the male one inside here and trace around it. The problem with that is, is that there's a 16th of an inch difference between the two. And honestly, a scroll saw blade is a little thinner than that. So the kerf would not clean it out properly. So I'm better off just to cut my loss here, which isn't much. It's, it's all of maybe three sixteenths of an inch. So anyway, I'm gonna carry on marking these out and I'll see you when I get them done. Well, I have a brand new number seven reverse tooth blade in the scroll saw and on the female end, I've taken these over to the table saw and cut the square edge here. Just one last thing to cut on the scroll saw. So all we're gonna do is cut out the female keyhole and as well our male key on the opposite side. Well, there's one last thing to do to these pieces of track, and that is to give them a good sanding and pay a little bit of extra attention inside your saw curves here for your track uh, because there's still that sharp edge there. So a little extra care in those saw curve areas and give each piece a good sanding. some wooden toy train tracks. Guys, it always seems that when children are playing with these, they want to expand the track that much further. And you can only have so many twists and turns, but without some extra straight pieces, really, how far can you go? Now, these dimensions that I gave you here today, you don't have to make them this long or this short. Um, you could make two foot long pieces and just put the male and female at either end and it's perfectly fine. Those would just be custom pieces for your child or grandchild to play with. Now, what if you don't have a scroll saw? Well, you could do this with a coping saw. You could do it with a band saw. It would just take a little longer. but. Either way, it's still a doable project. It is not out of your reach. Guys, you may want to keep one off cut of the track and uh, what this is for with these, well, this will go with the templates and this will be a setup block, uh, making the setup of the blade height as well as the setup of the fence that much faster and that much easier so that the next time I have some half inch scrap stock, I can just turn it into tracks fairly easily um, without having to mess around too much with the setup. Good. <laughs> Guys, I want to thank you for tuning in this week. This project, although it's a lot of work, it's a heck of a lot of fun. And I think the most rewarding thing about it will be watching a child play with it, knowing that it just took you a little bit of your time and a little bit of effort to give that child hours and hours and hours of fun. I hope you've enjoyed it, guys. I want to thank you so much for tuning in. 
If you have not already, please don't forget to like and subscribe. Click the bell so that you don't miss the notifications of future episodes of my show. I honestly hope you're going to try this one for yourself, guys. And I honestly hope you're going to join me again next week when I bring you yet another woodworking video.